Hi, um, I hope this works okay because my internet's not fantastic, but we will give it a whirl. So what I'm going to make today, I've got my earbuds again. Anyway, I'll do my best. Uh, better plug them in, actually. Um, we're going to make uh, a galette. So it's called the uh, ratatouille galette, and it's using the cutter. However, I'm combining two recipes. So that ratatouille galette has a certain pastry. And what I'm actually making is there's another recipe I'll cook you do. I'll show, I'll show them to you to find them. That uses almond pulp. And I have a fair bit of almond pulp uh, to use up. Now, let's go to my week. All right. So I'm using the almond pulp galette with tomatoes recipe. In fact, I've made the dough. So this is a, uh, an American recipe. You can see it's in ounces. So I've used the almond pulp. I, what I do when I make almond milk, I haven't made it for a while, but I, I keep the pulp and I freeze it. And since I've discovered this recipe, I actually freeze it um, in four ounce or 100 gram um, packs because this is a really nice recipe. But you can see it's so simple to make the dough. The dough has to rest for at least 50, uh, 30 minutes. Um, it, I actually made it yesterday. But you put in the flour, the almond pulp, the salt into the bowl, mixing, add the butter, add the egg and the ice water and refrigerate for at least an hour. So, you know, pointless showing that one. But that is the, so it's a good way of using up almond pulp anyway. But this is the one that um, I'm gonna make. So the ratatouille galette using the Thermomix cutter. So it's a different pastry. Um, so it's 20 minutes to wait. And we're going to start with the topping on the screen of the Thermomix. Okay. So here we go. And I'm adapting a little bit uh, in the recipe anyway. So I'm going to go up here into my week. Ratatouille galette. And if you weren't aware, what you can do is you can come down through this arrow. You can read down through the recipe, go past the pastry and hit topping. It says place a bowl onto the mixing bowl lid and weigh in 750 grams of zucchini. So you're just really getting the ingredients ready for chopping with the, with the cutter. So my zucchini, I've just got one. I need to use it up. So that's why we're having this. I've also got tomatoes that need to be used up. So it says weigh in the zucchini, weigh in the tomatoes. Now with the cutter, it does suggest that Roma tomatoes, oh, and, and I think with this, um, they're less juicy. So maybe they're a little bit better um, for cutting and also for using in this recipe. However, we went up to another adaptation. We went up to Mount Hotham on the weekend. My poor tomatoes got bounced from you know here to eternity and back again. So uh, they are too squishy to go through the cutter, they would just be mushed. So I have all actually already sliced them. I've cut off the worst bits and these will be all fine, but I would not be able to put them through the cutter. All right, set them on the side. Now, so we're gonna put the, the cutter in, remembering that the first thing that goes in is the drive shaft. Uh, side one up. Side one down. Side one is going up. Um, basket goes in. This goes on here. On there, maybe. Sprites. Insert the zucchini. Now, zucchini, oh, you're going to go in. It's going to be just a little bit too wide at this base bit. So I'm just going to take a sliver off the side there. Yeah, I'm going to go in. Insert the pusher. Oh, hang on, does it sound which? Interesting. Oh, it goes going to thick on here. You can see that. So I'm just going to take it to thick. Off we go. So I've just got the one zucchini. I'll show you how that's beautifully sliced there. That can be that from in there. Sometimes you find there is something left behind. This is almost, almost went through. Look, here we go. So there we go. There's the zucchini, um, beautifully sliced, ready for my ratatouille. So I'm going to take that off, uh, transfer it into a bowl, and now it's asking to put it back in position, but we're not going to do that because I sliced the tomatoes. All right, so we're just going to go past this. 
Now, it's really, really important when you've finished using the cutter that you take the shaft out because if you chop that up, it's not a good thing. So get used to that. Bring it the oven. I'm not going to cook it just now. Um, baking tray. I've got one of these from the mix shop. Okay, 60 to 100 grams of Parmesan cheese cut into pieces. Put my lid on. Just going to chop up the Parmesan cheese. 10 seconds, speed nine. Place in a separate bowl and set aside. Beautiful Parmesan, no anti-caking agents, um, just chopped you know, as much as you need as you need it. So that's going in there. There we go. Okay, another little adaptation here. I didn't have enough sun-dried tomatoes. So what I'm doing is I had some sun-dried tomatoes and I've got pitted calamata olives. So I'm just doing a mixture and it should be about 190 grams. Yeah, that's because there's a bit of oil in there, I think, before. 30 grams of water. So I'm just going to use my measuring cup here. Take that out. Not quite enough. Ten grams of chives. I'm not sure if it's ten grams, but I got some chives out. I have snipped them very finely. That's two grams. There you go. Heavily adapted. Three grams. Salt. Um, when I made this last time, I found it was quite salty, and that is. Well, it's definitely with the calamari olives, but also with the sun-dried tomatoes. So I'm not going to actually add any more salt. Pop my lid on. 30 seconds, speed three. So obviously if you've had, um, you know, the capsicum strips, you could use those. It's really, uh, and it was, it's really delicious, but it's actually it was quite salty. Um, and I think you just try and use up what you've got in the in the fridge. I mean, I just had a jar of olives. I had what was left of my jar of sun dried tomatoes and whatever you've got that's like that. You know, you could probably put anchovies in there too if you wanted. Spread down the size of the bowl. Exactly, no huge chop in here. It's still looking um, very much in whole pieces here. So I'm actually going to turn it up a little bit higher because I do remember last time I did it, maybe my sun-dried tomatoes and all those were a little bit tougher than they were last time. So whenever you turn up, it goes to the green line speed three, which is what it says on here. But once you've turned up to that point, once it's hit there, you can actually go through. Okay, have we'll a look at that. That's better. That's much more chopped up, and that's actually what I want because I want to be able to spread it. So I'll take this off here as well. Showing what it looks like. So that's much more spreadable than the big chunks that were there before. Okay, transfer the dough. Where's my dough? Let's 
So um, this is my dough that I made yesterday. It said to actually put it in, that's the one with the um, almond pulp in it. And I'm going to just put my mat down here. Okay, 35, that's 20. This isn't going to be quite 35. It could be an elongated one anyway, doesn't really matter. No. Just roll this out a bit. And when we ate this uh, a couple of weeks ago now, it's really delicious. And it was sort of a bit like a pizza, really. So it um, went down very well. I might have to use a bigger tray, I think. Got a few tomatoes and things. So just bear with me. I'm going to get a bigger tray. Rotty old bread mat on there. Okay, my, so my oven mat. This is a host reward, but um, this oven mat has done so much. So I'm going to pop the oven mat on top of the other pastry and just flip it over like that. So I've just literally flipped it over. Um, I'm going to take it off the tray in just a sec because it's pretty hard to um, roll out on the tray. <laughs> So I'm going to take that off the tray. There we go. It's going to be a little bit bigger, grotty old mat. A little bit of flour. So this is the gluten-free flour I've been using. It is um, wild sourdough. And um, Yoki has developed it. It's manufactured in Melbourne. And it is gluten-free, it is FODMAP friendly, 100% um, Australian owned and made, plant-based, vegan, no added sugar, gut friendly. So it's really not, it's not the cheapest flour in the world, but I went to one of her classes and got a little deal on it. So it was really good. Um, and I found it's worked actually as a total, you know, easy substitute for gluten-free flour for everything except for the one thing I did at a demo last week, which um, was a flatbread. And I did need a little bit more water. Okay, there we go. that'll do. So it may not be quite what it says, but that will do. All right. Now, the next thing, transfer onto the baking tray. Well, I'll stick it on here. Doesn't matter that it's off a little bit on here. That's okay. Oh, hang on. Now, there's an action error in this recipe because it misses out the whole putting the stuff on the top. So I'm going to do that now. Um, if you look into, if I go use the magic dots, Go on to recipe detail. It will tell me everything in here, but it's not coming up on the steps. So, spread the tomato mixture evenly over the pastry, leaving a four centimeter border. So, here's my tomato mixture. Smells so good. Thanks. Grab a knife. So I'm literally just spreading this over, but leaving a bit of a border at the side.
we go. It's pretty good. Then I have to overlap the tomato and the zucchini, starting from the outside. So I'm going to do that in that. My tomato slice is a little bit bigger than my zucchini slices, but here we go. Remember I had to trim some of those tomatoes because they had been well and truly mashed. So obviously if you had um, the same size tomato as your zucchini, it would probably look a bit prettier, but um, I'm not one for throwing away. If I can use something, I will. And it's a great recipe, so I just thought I might as well do this. Um, and I guess you could use other things. I mean, you'd have to be mindful if you were doing eggplant, you'd probably need to cut your eggplant first. I'm oh, sorry, cook, cook your eggplant first before you put it on, certainly to a certain extent. All right, what do I need here? I need piece of tomato, a bit of zucchini, and another piece of tomato. That's that. Then I'm going to go inside. I probably could have made it a bit, could have made it a bit, um, see if I can get some more in here. That there, and a bit of tomato in there. Got the ends of the tomato too. I'm going to have a bit of zucchini left over, I think, but that's okay. So my, some of my tomato is really big. So I'm actually just going to another adapt, adaptation. I'm going to use a bit more of this zucchini here. Zucchini slice coming up, I think. And a big piece of tomato in the middle. So it's not going to look exactly like the... Um, All right, da, 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 da. season with salt and pepper. I'm not going to do, oh, I will put some salt on top. I think your tomatoes have to have salt on them, don't they? I love salt on my tomatoes. Okay. Fold over the pastry edges. So, I'm going to literally just do this and I just have to push it up. It's a very, very soft pastry. All right. So it says to crimp them a little bit. It's a little bit tricky to do because um, the pastry is so soft. But as long as it's causing, it, it's giving a little bit of an edge to it, it's just going to keep the juices in. Um, so again, the picture is a lot prettier than this. Remember, I'm using a different pastry. Um, be fine. There we go. So there's an edge all the way around, and then I just got to sprinkle this parmesan on top. A lot of parmesan. So you can see it is very much just like a vegetarian pizza. I think it was a little bit too much there. Um, wash my hands. All right, so that is ready to bake a little bit later on. 25 minutes at 200 degrees. So really simple thing to make, great way of using a cutter. If you haven't got the cutter yet, get in touch. We can book in a demo. Um, and that is the Mediterranean, the Mediterranean ratatouille. Um, what is it? Got wet fingers. Oh, the ratatouille galette. It's not the Mediterranean, it's the ratatouille galette. So give it a but well, it's really delicious and a great vegetarian option.